Okay, my name is Anna Clark. You can find me on Facebook if you go to www.facebook.com slash Apostle Anna Clark. Okay, it is January 18th, 2013, so Happy New Year. And this is my first video <laughs> in 2013, I just noticed. Okay, so I actually got a new recorder, so hopefully I'll be able to upload more things. I have a lot of writings on my Facebook a lot of writings, a lot of different like prophetic words on there. <clears throat> so if you're like <clears throat> wondering where I went, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just woke up. So my throat's all retarded. But <laughs> if you're wondering where I went and stuff, I, I'm still still um, writing and everything. I, I'm still teaching. It just hasn't been uploaded as video form and audio form. But um, so um, I have so many writings on there, dreams, everything. So if you're an avid reader, because sometimes I write for like a, a long, <laughs> a long paragraph, a long uh, article or whatever, as God leads me, I just write. So what I need to do, what I really need to do and what the Lord told me to do was to upload more videos. And he told me that months ago and he told me that a few times, <laughs> but I was like, how, how, you know? <laughs> so right now I have a new phone which is my recorder. And um, <clears throat> today I'm going to share. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Today I'm going to share. This is the first time I talked this morning. So um, you hear me all raspy and whatever. But I have a message. I'm going to read a dream that I had. And I think that it will help some of you it will confirm some of you and then some others you might say okay well that's a funny dream oh well, that's kind of strange but um what will happen is when you are listening to someone who's who's had an experience that god didn't yet bring you to it will challenge you even sometimes to ask the lord for something like that for you to experience um, so what I noticed is even if my son, one of my kids or something, um, has a prophetic dream or some prophetic sort of experience, or they see things in the spirit or God's given them some sort of information and, or experience. Right. And I don't even know that that's possible because his ways aren't our ways and God is so outside the box <laughs> that we have placed him in that um, there's so much stuff you don't even know what to ask for. There's so much stuff that he wants to do, show, give, and for you to be that you wouldn't even know because um, <clears throat> no one's shown you or told you of that experience. But um, once you see someone have a certain experience, um, just take it as... You can have that too and go ask. We have not because we ask not. And this is funny because the whole thing that I just said right now about we don't know what to ask for. We don't know about some experiences that we can have. This same type of conversation has been coming up between um, just me and, and different people and my son when, when he was speaking with different people. And so it's really funny. God is really trying to get us to know more than what we know. He's trying to get us to know that there is so much more than what a lot of people have represented him as. There's so much more than you know. There's so much more. And um, anyway, I'm going to read my dream that I just had this morning. I didn't even, I didn't pray about it. I just felt, I don't, I don't even have to pray all the time and just like wait. I just sense a, a yes or no, a go or wait. And I just felt like go ahead and write it. And as you <clears throat> share your dreams or your spiritual experiences or seeing things in the spiritual realm, um, understanding comes. I usually don't need someone to help interpret my dreams 
um, a lot of times as I write them out, the understanding comes or or sometimes, you know, I got to share um, and speak about it with somebody else. And then the and then the understanding comes between two people, you know. <laughs> OK, let me not keep going on, but I'm going to read this dream as I wrote it this morning. And um, OK, so I wrote. Such a funny dream. My son and I were on a stage at some religious event we didn't want to attend. Because <laughs> the Lord showed what we would deal with in the believers with no joy and no wine in them. But as one nice older man asked my son a question from the crowd... You know, he asked something spiritual, of course. And my son and I looked at each other like, okay, here we go. <laughs> now we got to meet them where they are. And don't give them what they aren't ready for. Don't give them what you see is not yet their experience with the Lord. Or you know what happens. It's not palatable to them. Yet they will choke and stumble and probably argue. So a lot of times someone doesn't get an experience and they will, um, because they, they're like, show me a Bible verse for that. Well, there's verses, but God didn't unveil it to you yet. So we can't sit there and argue. But anyway, um, sometimes I just said in the beginning of this video too, sometimes if you share your experiences, it lets someone else know that there's more. But a lot of believers aren't, as ready to learn from the Lord as they claim. Actually, they act like they've achieved it. And so God will show you from a mile off people's spirit. You'll know a lot of times if they're receptive. Now, we don't know everything all the time, you know, but God gives us discernment and eyes to see from afar off a lot of times. Um where a Christian is in their walk and a majority of them, I'm telling you, they die at a baby stage that a lot of baby pastors on stage, technons have acted like this is the level, this is the level. So if they see that as the level to, to achieve something, that's where they reside at. But there's no, there's no apostolic, there's no prophetic, there's no discerner, there's no seer. Um, there's no supernatural. So they're all stuck in their mind in the, in the, um, you know, they're just religious. They do have some experiences with God, but it's not all that he wants to give us. And yet I'm not trying to act like I have achieved everything. And, you know, <laughs> I'm learning all the time, but I got some wild experiences with God. I'm talking about, if you want to see, dead rays, different signs and wonders and miracles that God does or different experiences. <clears throat> you got to be open to him and um, seeking him. But anyway, now, so in the beginning of the video, I was like, if I share, shared an experience that you didn't know that you could have with God in the spiritual realm, then you would know what you can ask for. And vice versa. But there are times when the Spirit of God will tell you, sort of shut up, but in a nice way. He'll say, oh, you know, don't talk. You know, he could say shut up if he wants to. But the Spirit of God will let you know where someone resides in the Spirit a lot of times. And so you'll know, oh, okay, they're still in the baby stage, but they think they're grown. Or they think that they're a Hugh U.S., but they're really a Technon, which is a baby Christian. And um, a lot of times it's not their fault because that's what the example that they have to look at. Okay, so um, the rule is always follow the spirit. The rule is always follow the spirit and you can't go wrong. If you follow the spirit, you won't go wrong in following the spirit. So maybe you're led to share experiences that, that to challenge someone to inspire them to ask God for more. But maybe you are led... Because you see a mile off or the Lord tells you, no, maybe you don't see where the person is spiritually without them ever talking. And that's by God's power that he lets us know that sometimes, you know.
Wow. So I was just getting more understanding to the dream that I just had and I just shared. And so I'm adding on another clip because God is showing me this. You know, a lot of times it's like um, he'll show you that many people speak out of their mind and speak out of their soul, which is their soul, you know. Um, sometimes they have truth and sometimes they don't. And a lot of times they think what's they think something's true because the masses are following it. And um, they didn't ask God because why? Because it looks like everybody else is following it and it looks right. Anyway, a lot of believers are like that. And then God was showing me in the dream, my son and I look younger than the crowd of Christians that we were standing before upon a stage and we have not tried to really lift ourselves up not that we've been perfect and everything we sometimes we try to run ahead of god and then you learn no you can't really run ahead of god don't do that but um and and try to and try to help people and stuff like that or try to lead but god has taught us <laughs> He's taught us to wait on him. We're funny, though. Isn't that funny when you do that? Because you think you think you're doing something. But um, God was showing me as I was listening to the dream that I just spoke on that many of the new leaders are looking younger than the old order, of course. And you're like, why would God raise you up and why would God place you on a stage and then, um, but the lot of the old order, a lot of the old passing away, I'm saying they're not even that old. They're, they're not even really old. They're like 40 or something. A lot of these believe these church leaders and stuff I'm talking about outwardly. I mean, not outwardly as an age, but they're of what's passing away. This churchianity, this false religious system stuff is passing away. Not saying God won't have buildings and stuff. But, um, so I have to share that, um, God showed me, um, that, um, okay, trying to get my train of thought back, that he lifted us up on the stage to speak. We're remnant. We are new breed. Me and my, me and my son, right? I got, I got two Two sons right now that are showing that they are that. They are the new breed. They are remnant. They are prophetic. They're seers. You know, um, they don't fit the old order, but God keeps sending us in and we don't want to go amongst this religious spirit junk. And these that think, show me in the Bible. Oh, believe this. It's in there. But God's not let you come to a place to where you get the revelation on some stuff because you're lacking some first things first. But yet they always want to be the one to teach us. They always want to be the one to uplift themselves. They always want to put themselves up over us and assume a position over us. We are not rebellious against anyone leading in truth. We don't want to follow the religious spirit and we discern that in some of you. So what the Lord does is he teaches us. He shows us so no one can take credit. He does it. Now, what I hope you really catch this. A lot of the old order is below the stage, set down, but they always lift themselves up. But let me tell you what God is doing. He's he's uplifting those that have bowed down to him and are not trying to be religious. And you're sick of the old order. Thank you for the old, for your old wisdom, you old cutie. But anyway, we don't want to get in the box. We're outside of the box. I'm thankful for the good that they've done, but I'm not bowing to a demon when I, when I bow to you acting like I'm now you can respect people and you can love people, but you won't put me under your thumb and control me like your Holy Spirit because you're not. 
So, I mean, I'm not saying towards you. I'm just saying you you probably know everything that I'm saying. You probably sense this. If you've been to different churches and you don't fit, if you see through the leadership in government, if you see through the leadership in a lot of churches, if you see through all forms of leaders, can you see their mindset? Can you see what's working in them? Well, God wants to uplift you. I know you're sick of the system. But he wants to send you. I know that you don't want to go in because you're disgusted because you see through it. You know what's pulling their strings. They're puppets talking and rambling on and they want to come and teach you. They're below you and the Lord has lifted you up. But so now it's like a time where God is calling us out. Apostles, prophets, seers, come out, talk, say, say what God wants you to say. Say it like he wants you to say it. Maybe it's not um, comforting to them, but we're not also, we're not just called to encourage and build the body. We're called to uproot stuff and cut stuff off of them. You know, 20 people, you know, I've heard situations where people are like, say a lady is with a man or um, somebody's in some situation and everybody around them is like saying, um, get out of this situation, get out of this situation. It's not a good situation, but there's no anointing on them. So the person, even though they hear truth, can't get free. Well, you know, you're anointed. When 20 came before you said the same message to the same one person, but nothing happened in their life. You know, you're anointed and have a breakthrough anointing when God sends you and you don't want to go get in their stuff. I don't want to go and get in their business. That's their own junk. I have my own things. Believe this. I have my own things, but God will send me and he'll send some of you to go cut some people free. And you don't want to go. You don't want to be uplifted. You just want to do your thing with God and just grow with them and just enjoy that and just be happy. I don't want to bring a correction. I don't want to cut some things off of some people because I got to get in their stuff. But you know what God wants to do? He wants to send you because you don't want to lift you up. And that's what God's doing to us. To us who have been hidden. We've been spoiled too. A lot of you, you don't even get to work because he won't even let your hand, he won't even let you say that my hand got me this. He's hidden you. He's molded you. He's separated you. He's consecrated you and he's made you so that you can see through a lot of things that other people can't see through. He's made you so that you can see through the old order that works somewhat, but it's like a crib that the baby has to bust out of. And that's the church is still in this baby state. And I'm telling you, these walls are falling. This old illusions and these old confinements and these old confiners and these old limiters and these old mindset leaders and these old ones. I'm not talking about wrinkled old. I'm talking about old order. The old order is passing away. Can you identify what's passing away? Even the old order. I don't care if you're a young pastor. If you're not moving with the spirit. If you're not letting him do what he wants to do. If your church is called the body. But you cut off members. You cut off giftings. You say I believe in that. But we can't let that work. Then your church is called the limb. God actually made me have to write some things to a leader that was for, you know, you don't know where you stand sometimes and, um, and you can mislead people. But in this time, there's no, there's no, you know, God has mercy, but it's no longer time to limit the body of Christ. You know, from the door, we'll step in a place and we know what is ruling in the house. And we don't want to go a lot of times. God, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. You know, my kids don't want to go because we don't fit. But God keeps making us go and putting us on stages. And we're like, okay, whatever you say. So and then even when we're there, sometimes we feel like when we're um, just maybe we're not always on a stage, but God will lift you up to be able to be in a position where um, someone is looking up to you and he wants you to pull them up. But anyway, we don't want to go a lot of times. We don't want to do a lot of things a lot of times. You have to remember to love people because they can only operate from the realm that they walk in and forgive their mind because they don't even know of what spirit they're of a lot of times. But he'll call us to them 
And um, and we I'm talking about God has shown us so much stuff that we have been sick. Like, you know how God wants to throw up when he thinks of lukewarm? Well, a lot of people think that they're hot for him and on fire and they're not. They're just religious and we want to throw up. We don't even want to go. But God tries to give us a compassion, you know, for the people. Anyway, I'm probably going on and on, but. He's lifting people up because if you just really want him, you don't you don't need to be recognized. You just want him. Then um, then it he'll lift you up. And, you know, I'm not saying that we don't want to help people. I'm not saying that we don't want to minister. Um, we're tired of the old. We're so tired of the old. Um, we're even tired of the young pastors coming up under the old. It's the old order is passing away. Look in Revelations. It's the time of, of the book of Revelations. God's revealing things. How does Babylon fall? It falls by your revelation. It falls by understanding even as you come out of certain things. Maybe God will put you in the world, but you won't be of it. But it's like God will give you a revelation on what you're really in. So that he could take you out of it or take your mind out of being in there. So you're not ruled under there. But he'll also slip you in like a narc and make you go in to places to reach people. You don't want to. I'm probably speaking to somebody who is just like us. You're so sick of it. You're sick of the fake stuff. You're sick of the masks. And you just you just want to be and you just want to be with God. And you just want to be in your liberty with him. And and you don't want these um these people that think they're judging if you're not a seer you're not a judge so shut up a lot of christians think that they're they're telling us what to do but they can't see anything in the spiritual realm so um but it looks like they know what they're talking about but they can't see in the spiritual realm um and then a lot of a lot of christians are they're just stuck at this baby stage You know, when God opens your eyes in the spirit, you can judge correctly what is from him and what's not. And what's crazy is you'll see so much that looks like it's holy, but it's not him. And it looks like something that he would say to do, but it's not, you know. So anyway, um, you, David's, who've been in the back lot for a long time. I've been prophesying this for years, but it's time. <clears throat> it's probably been different people's times through the years. So it's confirmed somebody. But I'm telling you right now that those that have been hidden, because there's shifts going on on so many levels in so many places. Um, God is causing those who have been in the back to come up front, the last shall be first. You've been, you've been laughed at. You probably, they probably think that you're weird. Um, cause you, um, see through so much stuff and you talk on another level that they can't ascend to though. You don't uplift yourself. You're just like, you know, and, um, you don't want to come up front, but I'm just saying, Maybe this is for somebody God wants to bring you up front. I'm telling you, it's not it doesn't have to be a pulpit. God might put you on a secular music stage with a new song. So you have to um, follow what God wants you to um, do, though you don't want to go. And me too. So shoot, I'm going to replay this for my own self. Now I got to (laughs) go. I'm just playing. Okay, so. Um, we have to go where he where he leads us, because those that are led of the spirit of God are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. So um, while God's doing everything new, but yet restoring everything back to original intention, how does God restore? How does God make everything new? Behold, I do a new thing. Don't look at the former things. How does he do a new thing, but yet restore back to the old and in, in original intention? Um, how can you make sure you stay in step with him? Just follow his spirit. Don't follow the old order um, because God's doing new things. I have so much in me that I can put out on this and um, and say so much stuff, but I probably should just do another video. If you have any questions, any prayer requests, any specific prayer requests that you have, I might get a specific word for you because God cares about the details of your life and you don't always find your details in the Bible. It can be used to confirm you once he tells you something or to or to tell you something. But sometimes you're like, I just need another confirmation. I just need another confirmation. And a lot of times the Lord uses me to confirm people. 
and and to say some stuff that you're like, wow, did maybe you heard God say something, but it seems like totally out of this world. Why would he say that? Well, um, maybe maybe we can speak and maybe he'll let me confirm you on the words that he's told you, because um, um, I'll say what he wants me to say. And and just that much. OK, so anyway, my name is Anna Clark. You can find me on Facebook. It's www.facebook.com slash Apostle Anna Clark. God bless you. Ask the Lord about everyone around you. Ask the Lord about everything you sit under. Ask the Lord for new eyes to see his word. Ask the Lord for a, a fresh or new understanding like what does he want to say now? Go back and try again to read those old verses and let God wash away the old order, the old perception of how you may have seen those verses. Maybe that revelation was for a time, but God has so much more to say when you go back and open it again anew and see what's the new thing that God's trying to do. Even in your life, let God have the rule in your life. Let God, let him, because the good desires in your heart, even he sets there and wants to bring them to pass as you walk out with him in this new world that he's making over right now, as you stand on the globe, he's making everything new and he wants to make you new head to toe. And he wants to make your whole life new. I'm telling you it's now.